Hello. Hi guys. Good evening. So today we are going to talk about, I would say, probably one of the more, uh, I'll say, popular stocks ah, as well. Ah. Con uh, consider the uh, amount of headlines and also the couple of, of, of the frequency this company appear in the news. Uh, I would say, yes, consider quite a hot company and uh, time to time you will see uh, not only the news covering it, but also uh, retail investors talking about it. And I would say it's a growth company. Uh, this has been a quite a aggressive kind of growth, right? Uh, later, we'll talk more and go more in detail on the performances of this company. This is a company that just IPO, I think, few years back only, right? So relatively young company uh, have just IPO, I think less than five years to be precise. They IPO somewhere in um, 20, 2017, right? So 2017 until now, yeah, it's still less than five years. Uh, gained a lot of attention uh, ever since it IPO. I think one of the most high, uh, one of the most uh, outperforming uh, IPO companies uh, back then. Uh, then of course there's obviously just a little bit, a bit stagnant la. later we will try to go in and theorize what could actually be the reason uh, the stagnant uh, share price and uh, also take a, 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 a deeper look into the business fundamentals and the business outlook also for a company like server dynamic so Chun Beng, uh any opinions thoughts on, on this company which is a uh, Engineering company, so APCC company. Yeah, I think this is the reason why we choose Super Dynamic because we touched about APCC last week. So uh, that's why uh, this is the reason we try to pull in a few more uh, engineering company. Uh, and then Super Dynamic is, of course, one of the guys that is quite popular in, in this industry. So I, I think um, you will usually relate this company with one uh, particular uh, guys, uh, which is the one that bring all these things, uh, bring all this company up, uh, including key power. So later we'll do a quick introduction about uh, the group managing directors of Suban Dynamics. So I think uh, probably we can start now. Okay, right. We'll go deep, deeper into Suban Dynamics an engineering company with potential upside with strong leadership to guide it. All right. So before, of course, the usual uh, sharing with you guys, uh, we actually are now uh, hosting or have the uh, premium club. So it's a subscription-based kind of services. So what would you get if you subscribe to premium club is that you get uh, an invitation to the uh, FB group where we talk about interesting uh, topics, discussion, and also where I come across good reading materials. I also share in there. Uh, we also will have a monthly private sharing session. And uh, of course, uh, those who attended Stock Plus 2021, 2022, and onwards, the Stock Plus will be one of the components of Premium Club. So uh, once you enroll, you don't need to pay additional uh fees uh, when you are a subscriber and of course there are some kinds of uh, contents that we curate or write uh, dedicated to just the premium clubbers so um, of course there's also the Burnish Dividend Gems report based on the subscribers preference and, and, and requests and uh, last but not least uh, we will also be holding some thematic events and, and sharings uh, webinar kinds of uh, sharing to actually uh, bring you guys deeper into the uh, worlds of investing and because there are so many type, types of business models out there, we just wanted to have a specific thematic sharing so that uh, you know what kind of uh, potential themes to actually look at and potentially find your next investment uh, idea. All right, so here you have it. This is basically the uh, uh, header of our club. So some of the examples are what we actually have created for our clubbers are actually previously the bond you was one of the key topics that actually spoke uh, a lot of us so we actually uh, dig out some data uh, and actually put off uh, a, a resounding article to our subscribers and tell them that okay 
if the fluctuating one you continues to happen, should that actually put you off investing? Should you actually stay uh, out of the market? Uh, we use uh, facts, we use figures to actually uh, justify our thoughts and also our opinions. Lah. So hopefully uh, this uh, uh, so-called justification can help to serve as a bit more reassurance to uh, potential uh, upcoming uh, investing kinds of uh, fluctuations and volatilations. And of course, uh, you also see that uh, we come across some very interesting articles from uh, external websites like how uh, Lazada lost its, lost its leads to um, Shopee in Southeast Asia. So these kinds of articles, and I think that uh, it's beneficial for potential uh, shareholders like uh, Alibaba or even uh, C Limited, where you might get a little bit of uh, intangible kind of knowledge from these kind of articles, I would also uh, share it inside the premium club. Right. So, of course, uh, here are the four thematic events that we have actually uh, confirmed, uh, which will be rolled out uh, every quarter uh, until the uh, end of uh, November. So you have electric vehicles, EV, semiconductor, e-commerce, and also cloud kind of uh, thematic events. Uh, and, uh, of course, if you are a uh, premium member, you get to access uh, the admission for free. And uh, we also open this for uh, external uh, public and the uh, uh, ticket is actually 199 per session, right? So of course, if you do want to just take part selectively, yeah, it will be 199. But if you are a premium member, it goes out for free. All right. So uh, going into the main topic, uh, the company that we will be touching base today is just for sharing purposes, educational purposes, or sometimes even for uh, entertainment purposes. So if you want to actually uh, make any investment decision, do, 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 do your due diligence and don't base it off uh, any opinions from us. We are not uh, uh, licensed financial advisors, but we can actually discuss uh, maturely about how we want to talk about a company, right? So here we go to today's uh, company of the night. Uh, super dynamic. So, Chumbing, uh, what does this photo actually tell us about server dynamic from an EPCC company to space agency? Sorry, I think I'm on mute. Uh, so I think this is the reason why uh, people are very excited about this company because uh, of all the headline that uh, Serba Dynamic managed to go into the news, right? So uh, it tend to be in a lot of cutting edge kind of uh, uh, projects and then do a lot of strategic uh, collaboration with different different parties. And of course, the key man is the one on the right, uh, which is the one is also behind uh, Key Power. So later we'll give a, a quick introduction about the, the guy and then uh, you will be, uh, you should actually remember this name. So he's really uh, giving a lot of impact uh, in the Malaysia engineering uh, uh, scenes. So I think a little bit background of uh, Super Dynamics. Uh, basically, they is the established since uh, 1993, very long ago. But then he has been focusing about all the engineering works. Uh, if you were I mean, just researching about them, then you will see a lot of time they are associated to oil and gas industry. Yeah, and then uh, they are the one providing all the uh, engineering solution, mainly to oil and gas and all the others uh, uh, industry that we put inside here. So it covers also petrol chemicals, uh, power generations, uh, water and also wastewater management and lastly utilities. So like, like what uh, Juban uh, shared just now, uh, they got just got listed a few years back and uh, the share price has been, I mean, if you monitor them, uh, it has been doing relatively okay uh, uh, in the, since they have go into the market. Yep. So to the main man of Super Dynamic. Yeah, so this is the guy uh, uh, behind Server dynamic and also behind key power. Uh, I think probably you heard of this name because of key power due to uh, I mean recently. Uh, so this guy is actually uh, Dato Doctor uh, Muhammad Abdul Karim. So basically, right now uh, the, he's a group MD uh, and also CEO for Server Dynamics. And then uh, even though they have already made this company to a success, uh. Back in 2019, he got appointed uh, to, by the bots to 
key power, which previously not called as key power, is Kumpulan Power Net. I think we, we have done a coverage on key power before. Uh, uh, he was appointed uh, there and then he managed to bring in a lot of uh, pipeline and eventually realized into contracts. Uh, uh, and you see a lot of exciting news going around key power, showing a lot of growth uh, in the past one to two years. So this is the guy behind uh, Suburban Dynamic as well. So it's the same thing, managed to get in a lot of pipeline and a lot of contracts. Yeah, so key person, uh, one of the more, I would say, outstanding kind of management that uh, actually managed to guide and, 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 and drive the company to greater heights. So what do they actually do, Chumbeng? Again, O&M, EPCC, and uh, what does this all mean? Yeah, so of course, I think Super Dynamic it's like any other uh, engineering company, they do all this. Uh, I wouldn't say it's on the upstream, but middle to low, lower stream kind of uh, uh, works. Uh, majority of it, they are, they are doing EPCC, which uh, stand for engineering, procurement, uh, construction, and commissioning. So basically, they're like a contractor or, or the main con that they do the projects uh, specifically for server dynamic. It's a few industry that we mentioned before, which is oil and gas power generation, water and utilities, uh, oil, uh, chemicals and, and so on. And of course, other than that, after they deliver the, uh, the service, uh, they also do operation and maintenance. And uh, they also have a small part that is doing some other supporting uh, products. Those is uh, quite small. The key one is actually EPCC and o &M. Okay. So o &M, EPCC for... Uh petrochemical companies, uh, oil and gas companies, right? So just try to uh, imagine that uh, when it comes to handling uh, crude oil and all these chemicals, you always need to have uh, uh, machineries and also pipes, right? And sometimes they are rotating kind of uh, mechanisms like that. So uh, usually the owner or the operators does not maintain them. So they hire someone, a third party, like someone I mean, to actually help them to do all the maintenance. So, uh, looking at the main drivers of the business segment, basically you can split down server dynamics revenue into a few, few uh, categories. O and M, uh, which is operations and maintenance. EPCC, we talk about this terminology. Uh, basically, they do engineering, procurement, construction, and commissioning, and uh, they also started to go into ICT, right? Uh, which is the information and communication technology. And last but not least uh education so Chubing, uh what are your thoughts on the so-called uh growth within all the four segments but in uh, over the year the segregation between uh the different industry is about the same uh, in a way but then you can see o and m actually contributed uh, quite a lot uh, for the latest uh fy which is 2020 and then uh, this is also a good sign because after you manage to do the contract, then you are able to do the maintenance works. Uh, but for EPCC, also see a slight growth if you compare uh, between uh, 2020 versus 2019. Uh, but the rest is, even though they show some growth, uh, I mean, ICTs, uh, but then for for the key focus still very uh, much into EPCC and o &M. And then, of course, this is very similar with key power, uh, uh, in short, bringing a lot of contract, different pipeline, and then uh, able to do this. But one of the good things uh, about this company is the O and M part, which is operation and maintenance is growing, uh, which is something that gives them uh, more certainty. Uh, because if you're purely relying on EPCC, then it's about scoring contract, contract, and then you might, you might exhaust the, the, the pipeline or, or lead uh, uh, in one time. So this is some key summary about the performance of server dynamics. Uh, e, e and D is, is quite interesting. They also do education and training, but uh, it's a very small amount. Lah. Yeah. So the main supporting pillar still is O&M and EPCC, right? So, of course, uh, we talk about oil and gas. Usually, you always look at, uh, since oil and gas uh, is bread and butter for a lot of uh, uh, the 
the economics of, of a lot of countries. So particularly Southeast Asia, uh, Central Asia, and also Middle East. So you can see that uh, dynamic, although it's a local company, they also have quite strong uh, business uh, exposure geographically, right? So they have business in countries like Bahrain, UAE, uh, Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and also Tanzania, and also UK, and also uh, our neighboring countries like uh, Indonesia and Laos. Right? So I would say uh, as a whole, so far, uh, monitoring uh, them, they have been quite strong locally and, and also equally strong uh, outside of Malaysia. Right? So I would say the ratio usually is around uh, 50 50, but I think slowly the um, contribution from uh, other uh, countries outside of Malaysia has been slowly growing. Lah. Right? So, uh, if you look at the historical statement, right, of uh, Server Dynamic, you can see that it has been growing, right? Uh, on an annual basis, this company has been growing its uh, revenue and also the uh, profit as well. But one thing you need to check out or even uh, take a look is that uh, the profit margin has stayed relatively the same. So around 10% to 11%, right? So, and uh, this company is growing uh, based on the amount of order book. So it is more on the revenue growth that actually pulls out the potential profit. So. From here, you know that this company has to keep on hunting for new orders to grow the company and it cannot grow uh, via uh, the so-called operating efficiency kind of methodology, right? So because it has been very efficient, maybe uh, net profit margin is only around 11 to 11%. 11 so it has to actually continue to grow uh, from the uh, so-called OMN and also the EPCC portion of it. But thank goodness, uh, the business uh, uh, pattern of, of an O&M company or an EPCC company, sometimes it's always uh, recurring. So you need to maintain your machineries, maintain your rotating equipment uh, on a very frequent uh, manner. Say, for example, every quarter one time, every half year one time, or every year you do it one time. So this gives server dynamic a kind of so-called uh, visibility that uh, the, the sales will, or the revenue will actually come in if they actually deliver a good job, right? So, and they just need to continue to serve out good services to existing customers and also keep on to find new customers. That is where uh, a company like Server Dynamic uh, will grow uh, from uh, hunting new customers and maintaining good relationship and services with the existing customers. Uh, you can see that on a quarter basis as well, it also has been growing uh, very, very well. And of course, the latest so-called uh, performance uh, which was one of the best uh, quarters for setup server I mean, is that um, due to a higher O&M contribution and also growth across uh, multiple of the sectors, EPCC, uh, ICT, and also the ed education uh, has been quite synergy and growing together very well, complementing each other very well. You can see that actually uh, quarter four of, of 2020 was actually uh, the best quarter uh, in the history of uh, server dynamic ever since it got listed. Lah. Right. So, from here, you can see it, this company has been so-called overachieving or giving out good vibes from uh, the so-called uh, income statement or the report card of, the, of, the, uh, of their performances. But of course, people would argue and say that how come share price has not tagged long uh, together, right? But before we maybe speculate or, or give out some opinions on maybe why that actually could happen, maybe you will find some answers uh, when you look at the balance sheet and also the cash flows uh, activities of the company. So you can see that uh, the company has been growing uh, when the assets have been trending upward means that the company has been putting in money, pumping in money to actually uh, increase the number of assets that is uh, business generative and cash generative. Uh, one thing you might to take a little bit uh, deeper look is the total debt has also uh, inched up. Uh, the total debt uh, across or versus the total assets ratio has been on the rise. So you can see the yellow line there has been on a steep increase. Uh, equity has been increasing as well because you have retained profits actually pumping into the uh, so-called retained earnings. But uh, of course, this company has been relying very heavily on their debt to grow. And uh, cash hasn't seemed to grow quite a lot, uh, apart from 2017 jumping to 2018. After that, it's just uh, uh, 500 million growth. Uh, and uh, as of uh, quarter three, 2020, it's pretty flat. Lah. 
So, uh, so when you look at here, you know, you roughly will guess uh, what, what, what could actually uh, paint a more uh, neutral picture uh, for server dynamics uh, share price versus the so-called uh, outstanding kind of uh, quarterly performances. So you can see that even though uh, operating cash flow has been increasing, yep, they do bring in the money, uh, cash does flow into their bank account. But apart from that, you can see the investing part of it is actually uh, increased or had, uh, at a higher quantity compared to the uh, operating cash flow. So what happened to the so-called uh, ever-increasing uh, investing cash flow is that this company has been very aggressive in the expansion of the business. So they purchase property, plant and equipment. And if your cash from your business cannot actually uh, fund or drive this kind of uh, aggressive growth, so you have to get money from elsewhere. So which brings us to the increasing financing cash flow, which is uh, money or cash has been flowing into the bank account uh, via uh, fundraising activities from loans and also equity financing. So that's why it explains the higher gearing that uh, Exaba Dynamic has shown in the balance sheet. And also uh, you have also come across uh, uh, Saba Dynamic undergoing private placements for multiple rounds to actually uh, get cash or raise cash from shareholders to pare down their gearing uh, ratio and to pare down their debt so that uh, they don't show so high kind of gearing ratio. So all of it ties together. Uh, business of EPCC and O&M tend not to be very, very uh, cash generative. So you would want to have a little bit of uh, financing aid and the financing aid can be coming from loans and also uh, equity financing. So uh, just a brief uh, look through uh, the cash flow activities of Server Dynamic. You can see that uh, it has actually uh, decrease if you take into consideration of everything. Uh, cash generated from operations have actually uh, decreased from uh, 273 million down to 97. So you can see uh, due to uh, very aggressive uh, purchase of inventories and also uh, increase in the trade receivables. So that actually causes the uh, cash from the uh, operations uh, to be on a downward trend. And uh, investing cash flow is actually on the higher side because you see that this company has been aggressive in the uh, acquisition of their property and plant equipment. And also, uh, they also do acquire some of their subsidiaries and, and smaller companies out there. Right. And also, a little bit change in the other investment portion will also determine and uh, make the so-called net cash use for investing activities a little bit higher. And last but not least, you can see that how they actually finance everything is through uh, proceeds of issuance and ordinary shares and also the net proceeds from loans and borrowing. So this is where all the money is coming in from the loan financing and also equity financing to ensure the company can grow uh, aggressively. But of course, this comes at a cost. Uh, if it's not properly maintained, properly uh, governed, then of course, this company might run into some liquidity issues and that will pose a little bit of downside risk to existing shareholders, right? So this company uh, does pay out dividend. I would say uh, modest, uh, judging that it's still a growing company. Sometimes uh, they do not tend to pay out a hefty sum of their profits. And looking at the so-called operating cash flow of uh, server dynamic, uh, it would be best if the company continued to uh, retain the cash and use it for so-called their yeah, daily uh, operation requirement rather than paying out the dividends and then run into a liquidity squeeze and then uh, being forced to go uh, corporate exercises like uh, price issue and also private placements. So quite straightforward, uh, simple company just like uh, doing a lot of things. So, uh, but what are the prospects of a company like Superdynamic because um, they are not the only uh, EPCC companies, right, Shunbei? Yeah, I think EPCC, at the end of the day, uh, is how you able to get the contract. Of course, maybe uh, leadership is, is one of the key ones due to the reputation and so on. But uh, even though we put it as a prospect uh, on a very, I mean, uh, from another angle, uh, he also spent a lot of time trying to build up K-Power. Uh, you can see they try to segregate it by different industry. Same thing, bringing contract a uh, uh, different country. Uh, a lot of it come from Middle East. Uh, same thing also if you can, if you monitor or check out uh, uh, how K Power managed to secure all the contracts. Uh, but but 
will this restrict the potential of super dynamic or key power on the other hand so so this is some of the thing that you should uh, take a step back but but of course regardless uh they are doing epcc they are not the manufacturers one or they're just sourcing from different different uh, uh providers and then they turn into a solution and then uh, they realize it but, but then they are not the one at the top of the the food chain that can uh, draw the most uh, profit margins uh. but of course uh i was making a joke with, with japan when, when i studied this company said, hey it, it is uh, so called Iron Man of, of, of Malaysia that try to do different different things uh, uh, in, in the in the technology uh, world or, or whatnot. So maybe he tried to position himself in in, in that la, which helped because uh, uh, now uh, like it or not uh, AI five G also thing is definitely coming, and he is famous for delivering the solution. Meaning you got all these products, but then to turn into a solution that work for let's say a big corporate big big, big enterprise or a big as a smart city or whatnot, maybe you look for him. So this is some of the prospects that come along uh, for server dynamic, uh, even though they are relatively young in, in the share markets. Yeah. So we also saw that just now, even though this company has been uh, more relying on O and M and also EPCC, there's also the so-called uh, new vertical uh, ICT and also uh, the, the education uh, and sharing kind of a vertical in 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 the progress is also growing quite well. So just that like, uh, from a number why it's still small right but it is really how um uh the management of the company can actually uh grow it quickly enough so that uh, uh because ict uh from a business point of view is actually uh, less intensive in terms of the capital compared to epcc and also and, and you don't need to buy so many you know inventories and right? start with uh inventories in your warehouse uh basically you just dish out a good software uh, to subscribers and then subscribers will just uh, continue to subscribe if they think that uh, your software and your solutions is sticky enough. So that would be a more ideal situation for Osama Dynamic uh, as, a, as a catalyst and a prospect point of view. Lah. But what are the risks? We have Iron Man, a uh, very, very capable management uh, and a company looking to pivot uh, just from uh, O&M and EPCC company into ICT as well. But what are the so-called potential uh, roadblocks uh, preventing this company from reaching higher heights to make? I, I think this is quite typical when, when you are at the lower end doing the main con uh, job. So it's relatively low margin. Uh, uh, contract base one off, but then uh, for Super Dynamic, they have been able to show the upside from the O and M, which is operation and maintenance part, which able to to give a little bit of certainty. Uh, but then the biggest uh, uh, risk should be on the third one, which is they are highly leveraged uh, financially, uh, taking a lot of debt to get more contract, take more debt to get more contracts. Uh, uh, it need to be uh, under a continuous kind of action. If let's say one one of the part lose the momentum. Then they might be in deep shit. So, so this is one of the biggest concerns. Uh, uh, like I think last week when we covered solar bears, people asked about CY Park, right? I think they uh see somehow also leverage, but then they have different problems because they didn't manage to collect uh money from 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 the from the from the client or whatnot. But same thing is something to do with the financial uh, uh part. So these are a few yep. key things that 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 uh you might need to take note but then on the other hand uh this quarter uh the latest quarter of super dynamic is quite well i mean uh, they did pretty well uh out of a lot of, uh analyst uh expectation so they are expecting some somewhat lower but but then they, they managed to outperform so this is some of the upside la. uh but of course this kind of thing it, it, it may be it's a one-off because they managed to accumulate a lot of contract realize at one go, uh, but the same risk still uh, persists to this company. Yep, I think you are absolutely correct. And uh, which brings us to the valuation of server dynamics. So uh, I have been following this company for quite some time, right? And previously, uh, server dynamics was trading at around PE, I would say 12 times, 13 times, 40 times, right? So uh, due to the recent uh, stagnant stagnation of the share price while the earnings you continue to grow uh you would see that the pe actually got compressed right so server dynamic is always around 
uh, PE 10 plus ish uh, uh, as of recently uh, as for the past few months always around uh, 1 ringgit 70 cents sometimes down a bit to 1 ringgit 60 cents never uh, have they breached past uh, ring, uh, 2 ringgit a share even though you know earnings has been quite uh, showing quite positive growth uh, but after you go through the so-called uh, shortcomings on the risk of the company and how uh, Geared the, the balance sheet could be, uh, of course, that may, might actually spell out the so-called dragging factor that's actually dragging the share price from uh, tagging along all the growth and the earnings of the company. La. So all everything would have a little bit of a tie back to the share price movement. Uh, it will uh, go up uh, because of some reasons and it also get hold back because of some reasons. Uh, ROE wise, of course, the company is giving quite good numbers, 19% for an EPC company, but do take note that uh, that means that uh, a lot of it is actually running on debt because you rely heavily on debt. Uh, your equity portion to uh, run your business is smaller. Uh, that's why you can actually get the higher ROE if your company is very geared. So companies who run their business on debt, like Nestle, Carlsberg, all always have a very, very high uh, ROE, close to 100% also possible. Right. And uh, training 12 months profit margin is just around 10% plus each on it. And of course, judging at the trailing dividend, you get a 3.13% dividend yield. But that ties back to uh, my so-called opinion. This is a company that is still growing. You don't want it to spend all the earnings uh, dishing it out uh, as dividends uh, to shareholders because uh, it's a very competitive business. Sometimes the payment terms are not favorable to EPCC players. And once they pay out their cash as dividends, uh, they run into uh, so-called cash squeeze and then they have to ask for cash from shareholders. Sometimes they even do it via the private placement uh, mechanism and uh, retail investors are the ones uh, holding on to the shorter end because uh, private placements are shares are placed out to specific individuals uh, inside the company or outside the company uh, and uh, your shareholding will get diluted because uh, more shares are actually sold out to sub, sub, some, some other shareholders out there, right? So do take note that uh, it is potentially a good company with a lot of growth prospect, but there are also a little bit of uh, factors dragging the company back from achieving the so-called uh, PE ratio or the growth in terms of the PE ratio. Lah. So you can see here, straightforward uh, share price has been doing quite well uh, previously, but just happened to drop down uh, recently. Lah, right? So Chunbing, uh, from share price and the so-called uh, Fundamental performance-wise, what are your thoughts? Actually, my, my first thought is not thinking about uh, whether it will go up or, or go down. My first thing is I, I associate the share price movement to K-Power. K-Power <laughs> did super well. Uh, I think now, although got corrected a little bit, but still, if you are the early adopter of, of the share, uh, maybe you, you still earn, I mean, the returns still be quite quite good. Uh, yep. And I, I don't know whether this is the fate of, of having a lot of contract pumping up and then uh, after a few quarters, they started, started to slow down and then started to get more debt to, to, to continue uh, uh, the growing story uh, will impact uh, 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 the share, I mean, the impact, the interest of retail investor going in or not. Lah. So not so much about server dynamic, but, but it, it made me link directly to key power because key power only at their second year after uh, the IMS step in. So whether we we'll have the same fate or not, I don't know. But of course, we, we a lot of factor. Uh, 2020 is the year that, that that pandemic hit. I mean, all this also contribute a little bit. Of course, uh, the latest quarter, they managed to outperform uh, uh, and then it beat a lot of expectation from different, different analysts. You can go through their uh, website. Uh, there's a lot of analyst, analyst reports all giving about the quite consistent uh, the, the, the comment. So I think we pass the ball back to uh, our viewers to actually uh, ponder and uh, you know make their next step whether uh, Sabah Dynamic is a potential company hiding in plain sight, uh, whether it's just a little kind of a problem or issue that they just need to solve and then um, you see the share price actually going after the so-called previous PE ratio, which is around 13 to 14 times. Or uh, it will continue to face a little bit of a uh, uh, discount, which is 
now the market wants is to trade the company or value the company at 10 times PE. So really pass the ball back to you guys, you first, and uh, do your due diligence, study the company deeper uh, before you make any investment decision. So I guess quite simple. We've come to the end of the sharing uh, of tonight's company, Cyber Dynamic. Uh, we hope that uh, even though it's a simple one, uh, but you actually uh, gain a little bit of perspective on how the company is being you know, operated, how the uh, leveraging gearing uh, ratio of the companies actually is and uh, how they can improve potentially also, right? So we will head on to the Q&A and see that uh, any uh, tough questions await us. Okay, so... Seems like too heavy to Jalan. <laughs> I, I think mean, cut across too many industry la. I mean, of, of of course you cannot. Beside the nature of work, uh, is the same. I mean, EPCC, but uh -huh. you will be the expert of so many industry. Uh, I mean, this this might throw you a question uh, uh, to th to think about la, But. The Ironman has been able to show not only in cyber dynamic but also in key power. So this is something that is, is quite respectable. Uh, uh, they're able to really pull in deal and, and, and keep on getting contracts and, and fulfilling it. Hmm. So Hong Hui is saying skeptical on the business in Middle East. Uh... At first, I was also skeptical. Actually, I was skeptical on the business for Malaysia. Uh, if you go through why Cyber Dynamic has did so well uh, previously was that, um, if not mistaken, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim, right, he was an ex uh, Petronas guy. So even though he left Petronas, he set up uh, Cyber Dynamic, he, I think he, he was also a high flyer in Petronas and he also got some, uh, you know, good connections with some of the ex uh, uh, colleagues inside Petronas, right? So it makes, maybe, uh, getting contracts easier, but not to say, I mean, don't get me wrong, Cyber Dynamic has been a very good company in uh, OPPO and M and also EPCC. So once you have a very good resume and you also pass through the so-called uh, Petronas vendor screening system, it makes sense for you to actually outperform in terms of the uh, local uh, Malaysia oil and gas businesses, right? And uh, if this company uh, eventually grow out of Malaysia and also manage to grow in the Middle East as well, where I suppose uh, it's pretty much 50-50 fair competition and uh, it's not it's not like uh, he has some, you know, very good uh, friendship, relationship whatsoever. Uh, I would say that it actually uh, justify that, okay, this is a company that is serious in the EPCC and o &M. Uh sphere right so they are competitive uh, not only locally but also um, on an international space so of course uh, international wise quite a lot of uh, countries for it to focus but nonetheless I would say that uh, still KIV on the potential uh, contribution and growth coming from uh, Middle East South Asia and other parts of uh, the, the, the regions uh, uh, outside of Malaysia only lah. I think we already stated the biggest worries, uh, highly geared balance sheet, right? And um, how they actually deleverage previously was always through product placements. So uh, more shares are getting placed out to uh, substantial investors like uh, Mr. Uh, Abu Karim himself and also some of the uh, suburban dynamic management and also maybe uh, some of the other, I would say, fund houses or GI uh, government linked companies. So uh, your shareholding will get diluted if the uh, outstanding share growth outpaces the uh, earnings per share, then of course uh, you will see that the share price would face a little bit more obstacles to, to climb up and tag along the, the, uh, the so-called earnings and growth of the company. Yeah, yep, I think Darren uh, further illustrate that uh, smart in doing business, but uh, having relatively high debt, right? So uh, uh that are the that are the so-called key points that you need to justify. I'm not saying it's not good, but you really have to justify how uh the company do they have some measures and ways to actually uh come across 
or pass this uh, so-called obstacle or not. If it does, if you are highly confident, then it actually makes sense for you to, you know, bend the rules and uh, actually enter a small position if you have uh, the kind of confidence with the company management. Uh. Right. What's your thoughts on risk and reward investing in Superdynamic at the current price level? Uh, I think if you look at the so-called sentiments of the retail investors for Super Dynamic, even though after the good results came out, uh, share price went up a bit, then it came back down again. So shareholders are probably uh, confused that how come no growth at all in the share price never go up higher and higher, even though uh, you know, income statement-wise is uh, it's growing, it's going very well with the momentum, but share price doesn't take along. long. Uh, maybe this kind of lackluster price movement could continue, right? And um, of course, uh, until the gearing uh, debt level of the company is soft, uh, is soft or maybe pared down a bit, uh, it will always be, uh, I would say, negative point, uh, something retail investors will want to think uh, more and more, consider more and more before they actually are willing to buy a company at a premium. So uh, based on all of these aspects, uh, of course, uh, the company, I would say, is pretty neutral. It can actually uh, go down further. It can also go up higher because uh, there's an equal um, force between the pros and the upsides and also the potential downside. So I think because of that, you can see that uh, for the past 2020 uh, year horizon, it has been really flat. Ne nine never went down to IM1, uh, but never breached uh, IM2 as well. So I would say pretty neutral, but it's just whether in the upcoming uh, near to midterm kind of horizon, whether a positive news would drive it higher or a negative news would drive it lower. Lah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, Dr. Karim has been acquiring more and more shares from open market. Is that a sign that he is confident uh, in his company's long-term growth? And is this more suitable for long-term investing in terms instead of short-term trading? Uh, yes, I would say you can take it as a kind of a sign that um, management is actually thinking that company is undervalued, that uh, he is actually showing and trying to give us hints that, um, yeah, I'm buying the shares from open market uh, and I'm confident of my own, uh, own company. But of course, uh, do take note, uh, he is the so-called owner and uh, top management of the company. Uh, a little correction in share price uh, does not spell uh, a little, I would say will not spell a lot of uh, so-called pain to him. Do take note that he is management. He also gets entitled to uh, ESOS, all kind of thing. When all of this gets a weighted average out, uh, he might be actually holding uh, the price of uh, Silver Dynamic at a relatively good price, right? And do take note that he actually uh, IPO the company, so he is in financially good condition to 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 buy uh, buy back a little bit of uh, shares at a premium uh, compared to us uh, retail shareholders who actually are buying at uh, relatively higher price, right? So uh, that is a good sign and a possible sign that uh, it is a uh, a. Uh, uh, high confidence that he wants to pro pro protrude out but do take note that uh, uh, it is not just that straightforward lah. so I will want to see a little bit more uh, maybe maybe instead of doing prior placement uh, maybe let uh, retail investors also participate in pairing out pairing down the uh, so-called debt uh, level of the company because I don't want to you know if I am a retail investor of server I mean I don't want to see my state getting directed from uh, prior placement so if you are so confident, then let retail investors also share the opportunity to invest more and uh, you know pay down the company debt and ensure the company has enough capital to uh, deliver more more projects. Uh. Okay, is their nature of business that require high capex all the time, or is it purely they are being overly aggressive to expand their business? I think it's a piece, uh, it's a mixture of both. Uh, when you do EPCC, UOMM, you need to ensure you have sufficient uh, levels of uh, inventories and parts so that you can, you know, uh, straight away uh, execute a certain kind of uh, jobs, right? But do take note some maintenance, some uh, of the op uh, operating works 
it's not just a one day or few hours. It can be a few days or weeks kind of a, a overhaul, right? You talk about very huge machineries that requires long, long time periods of uh, time to actually do maintenance and also overhaul. So, and um, these kind of things can actually uh, drag the so-called cash uh, payment terms uh, that uh, server dynamic is actually getting, right? So it will be both sides, I would say, uh, because it requires more cash to grow and also uh, the business payment cycle might not be too uh, siding EPCCs and, and so-called engineering companies. All right. Uh, server dynamic has poor cash flow, cash conversion cycle. You see someone already noticing some trends. Yeah, you can see that uh, even though profit has been inching upwards, the operating cash flow is not even tagging uh, concurrently, uh, trending concurrently. You would say that um, something is, I won't say not right, lah, but this is the kind of uh, downside or risk when you want to look into EPCC companies, uh, contract-based companies where the payment terms might not benefit the company that you want to invest in, right? So uh, say, for example, you compare uh, EPCC company kind, kind of a payment terms high of a cash flow, cash conversion versus uh, uh, FMB. You wouldn't get loan to buy uh, Milo from a, from a shopping center or from a grocery, right? You pay cash. Even though you if you do it via the credit card, you still need to... Uh, return your, your, your debt, credit, credit card payment every every month. And the company who produces Milo actually get uh, cash uh, collected upwards when you, when you actually buy a product. So this all of this uh, payment terms, business model, everything will actually tie the company fit. And uh, being in just the EPCC or contract-based uh, business model would actually spell out that uh, one of the risks or downsides that... Uh, the payment term might not always favor these kind of companies and hence the poor cash conversion cycle. And maybe that is the main reason uh, that the share price has been quite stagnant recently. Uh, short message, or I would say to make it short, it's not really good uh, for a company like Server Dynamic because you need cash to run a business, you need cash to buy uh, components, inventories, and uh, to actually have that kind of cash coming from too high of a too high portion from the debt is not that good lah. So that's why uh, it has been going through few rounds of few rounds of uh, equity financing to pay down the debts already, right? And it's still it's still quite high. So moving forward, uh, I want to see maybe a more effective way of uh, paying down the debt. Maybe uh, maybe more private placements or even through the rights issue kind of mechanism. But uh, for server dynamics business model, EPCC kind of business, uh, not too good to have too high of a debt. Uh, and we have a lot of companies uh, with similar examples that are having too high debt and uh, have been on ongoing exercises to pay down their debt. Already. So it's not too good to, to, to have a good high debt for, for EPCC companies. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Chun Bing can shed a bit of... Uh, <laughs> idea yeah, but it's, it's always good to be associated to all these initiative what i mean since you are in this line of business uh, let's say you are doing construction of course instead of telling people you are building uh, another condo but building a trx will be a very important indicator that you are able to draw in contract high value yeah but of course i, I think nevertheless uh uh, Dato Abdul Karim is always the one that able to draw all these things in. So this is the upside that uh, uh, Dynamic definitely uh, uh, can show to all the investors. He yeah. definitely is a guy that can bring a lot of contract. It has been proven for so many years. But it's just whether this business model is attractive or sexy to you or, or me or, or other retail investors or not, I think it's a question mark. But then... Yep. In terms of uh, the ab ability to bring contracts, he, he definitely showed it uh, for many, many years. Yeah, I truly agree with you, Jumei. But yeah, I think that's the beauty of uh, investing. 
it is always wow macam great potential but there's always a downside that also uh, comes into your mind that hey you think everything is so straightforward that uh, it does not come with risk it does not come with uh, pitfalls so it, everything always ties together so companies with lower risk then tends to also have a lower kind of momentum in terms of their growth expectation but companies with higher risk higher ambiguity uh, also comes with a higher potential as well so all of this uh, that's why they call it the risk to reward ratio right so it's really up to us to find out how uh, reward how high the reward is and how deep the the, the risk is then from there we actually uh, tell ourselves okay so if this is the risk to reward, uh, is this actually something uh, suitable for my appetite or not? If yes, by all means, uh, size or position well. But if no, then yeah, look for a new company to invest in. It's very straightforward. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's about it for Silver Dynamic. Um, of course, the space exploration, just take it with a pinch of salt and uh, monitor whatever progress they are out there. Uh, it will not come just in one year's time because look at Malaysia's uh, space exploration team. Uh, we also need to send our astronauts to you know uh, NASA and other companies or other countries who have the capability to send people to space, right? So we are no way, no position to build our own rockets and do space, space exploration. So it really uh, scratches my head as well how space exploration will play as the next uh, pot potential prospect to, to super dynamic, la. right? Uh, okay, before we end, I think a little bit of uh, update from Marcus is saying that uh, super dynamic signed memorandum of understanding with uh, Swiss to twelve uh, Switzerland-based private expert with technology to manufacture components that are used in satellites. Yeah, so uh, another APCC work, uh, but just uh, making different things this time around. Right. And uh, ICT started catching up uh, APCC in terms of revenue, and the growth is 200%. So uh, beneficiary of Malaysia Digital Project. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, by not just doing O&M and APCC, uh, the ICT component can grow fast enough. And as I said, uh, ICT doing software is less intensive in terms of uh, capital requirements. And from that, the profit can actually use to pair down uh, the heavy debt or the big debt that they actually have right now. Lah. So fingers crossed, if everything goes smoothly, then yes, uh, you will see higher potential, higher upside for super dynamic. But uh, if uh, all else remain the same, then yeah, it will continue to stay gloomy or stagnant for quite some time. Lah. So last but not least, I think we just want to highlight again, if you guys are interested uh, of joining Premium Club where we do more uh, different, different kind of sharing uh, in terms of articles, in terms of uh, psychology, in terms of uh, uh, articles even from other people as well. But we think it's beneficial to also read up if you invest globally. Yeah, do check out uh, Premium Club. Of course, the thematic events that are upcoming are uh, uh, FOC for all Premium Clubs. Uh, we will not hike up your Premium Club membership fees forever. Uh, if you do not subscribe now, maybe in the future it will go up. But once you are subscribed, uh, be sure and be com be, be 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 at least that uh, your membership stays the same price forever until uh, until until premium until premium club or why not uh, be become uh, old man and 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 you know Kaya Plus just uh, hopefully we can actually pass Kaya Plus on to 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 a younger generation and this continues uh. but uh, for those who have actually joined us uh, yeah. We hope to continue playing an important part in your investing journey. So as always, thank you for tuning in every uh, Thursday night to our sharing. Uh, we hope that uh, it has delivered a bit of uh, you know insights and how to uh, view and dig deeper on a company like Silver Dynamic. So next week we will see you. Soon. We will see you at the same time, nine to ten p.m. Uh, let us know in the comment section what kind of companies you want us to cover, and we wish you a good evening and a good weekend coming ahead. So see you next week. Bye bye.